Just recently, the Holy One above visited our homeland. The air hung heavy with crime as murmurs of escalating trouble reached even the heavens. With a whisper carried on the wind, the Almighty outlined a task at hand for Noah. The task was simple, built another ark and shelter two of every living being, including a handful of mortal living. Here is the layout of the ark and you should make heist, because in a half year, the never-ending rain will start for 40 days and 40 nights, said the Lord. A half year later, tears clung to Noah's cheeks, reflecting the drowned sky. As he stared at the empty yard, he had built no ark, only loss. Noah, where is the ark? He roared. Noah pleaded, Please forgive me, Lord. Progress has been made and things have changed. So, Noah started with the endless explanation of the non-existing ark. According to the building inspector, I need a building permit, and he insists I install a sprinkler system to deter fires because of safety hazards. He's serious, I think. Who knew? Building an ark in my backyard was a zoning violation. According to my neighbors, should I have gone with a minimalist canoe instead? I hear those are all the rage among hipsters these days. Then the Department of Transport insisted on a mortgage to cover any financial burden of building the ark and to clear the passage for the ark's move to the sea. I argued that the sea would come to us, but then I got looks of confusion. But getting the wood was another setback. Cutting of trees is another ban to save the tree creatures. So, once again, I explained to the environmentalists that the reason of cutting of the trees was to save any tree creatures. And yet again, they did not buy my story. Then, I started gathering the animals. PETA shows up with megaphones, accusing me of running a floating zoo prison. So, the environmental department wants an impact study on a flood by building a boat to escape it. And I am trying to resolve a complaint with the Human Rights Commission on how many minorities I am supposed to hire on my construction crew. They want union carpenters who can sniff out gopher wood from a mile away and caulkers who can walk on water. To put the cherry on top of the cake, revenue services have frozen all my assets, saying that I am illegal in this country as well as a danger to their kind. I am asking for forgiveness, my lord, but it would take a decade to finish this arc. Suddenly, the storm took a dramatic exit, leaving a bright yellow sunshine that stretched over the sky. Noah asked the Lord, are you not going to destroy the world? The Lord answered, no, the government has beaten me to it. <laughs> if you liked this joke, Please keep on watching for our next joke. So, this one time there was a mother with three daughters. They were a wealthy family, especially from the mother's side. It was clear as daylight that the mother was the one in control in the house and had the highest bar of power, mainly because she always sat on the father's head. The daughters were every man's dream wife, but the mother was the best definition of, if arrogance was a currency, she would have been a billionaire. All three of her daughters were happily married. And one day, the mother wanted to test her three sons-in-laws to see if they liked enough to save her life, as she was such an unlikable person. 
She planned a scenario of how she will see if her son-in-laws liked her or not. The plan was simple. Walk with each affianced son along the path alongside the river and pretend to fall into the water by accidentally falling into the water. And the ones that saved her life was the ones she knew liked her. So she took her first son-in-law and asked him to go and walk with her beside a river as they walked on path around the river. And suddenly the mother fell into the water, paddling like a hummingbird caught in a bathtub. The son-in-law jumped into the water and saved his mother-in-law from drowning. The next morning, the first son-in-law that saved her received the car keys of Ferrari with check of $5 million with a note that said, thank you for saving my life, your mother-in-law. Two days went by and the mother tested the second son-in-law by also falling into the river and without hesitation, her second son-in-law also saved her. So the next morning, the second son-in-law also received a Ferrari and a $5 million check with a note that said, thank you for saving my life, your mother-in-law. The mother was so happy because so far two sons-in-laws liked her enough to save her life. So the next morning, she tested the third son-in-law. They walked beside the river and the mother-in-law did the same scenario by falling into the river, windmilling her arms like a malfunctioning scarecrow in a hurricane. But with a smile on his face, he watched the mother-in-law drowning in the river. So the next day, the third son-in-law received an envelope that said, here are the car keys to a brand new Royal Royce and $10 million with a note that said, thank you for saving my life from your father-in-law. <laughs> if you like this joke, please keep on watching for our next joke. <laughs> Let me tell you the story of when my friend was screwed by nuns. So, I was visiting my friend in London the other day, and we went for a drive along the M25. And as we were driving, I couldn't believe my eyes. There was this ginormous sign on the side of the road that said, screw St. Mary's Convent in five miles. I thought by myself, I better not say anything, but that can't be right now, can it? So we drove on along the road and suddenly there was another great big sign. And once again, it said, screw St. Mary's Convent in two miles. So I thought by myself, well, I read that right the first time, but could it really be? And before we turned around it and we had any conversation at all, I saw the next sign saying, screw St. Mary's Convent, turn right. And I asked my friend, well, have I read that notices right? Oh yes, he said. I had a friend of mine from the golf club went in there one time to see what it was all about. Well, what happened? I asked, curious. Well, he drove up and there was this big car park and this lovely great big building. He walked with a prance, thinking he is in for a very good time. He rang the bell on a great big goth-like door and it was opened by a very lovely, attractive young nun. And she said, ah, hello, sir. I think I know why you are here. Would you like to follow me? So he went in and up some stairs and along a corridor he took a left and went through yet another corridor. And suddenly they came to another great big door with a second nun holding a big silver plate. And the first one said to the friend, would you like to put a hundred pounds on the plate, sir? You can go through this door and the world is yours. 
So, he chased the 100 pounds out of his jacket and putted it on the plate. The door opened, and he stepped in, and suddenly, the door shut behind him. And, yet he was back in the car park. He looked up with confusion, and there was the big notice saying, you've just got screwed by the sisters of Sanit Mary's convent. <laughs> if you like this joke, please keep watching for our next joke. Is a nice mother-in-law joke. This guy was on holiday, driving through this small rural town when he saw this funeral procession. The was the hearse in front of the procession, followed by a long queue of people behind it. The guy had to drive past the procession and he was paying attention to the people in the long queue. What he found weird was they were all middle-aged men looking happy and chatting as they followed the hearse. He figured that it must have been an old friend that passed away and that this was the way the friend wanted to be remembered. As he got to the front of the queue, there was a man having his dog on a leash, directly behind the hearse. This man also seemed happy, and he thought it okay just to ask who this special guy was that passed away, with all these happy middle-aged men behind him in such a long queue. He lowered his car's window and asked, so, whose funeral is this? The guy with the dog answered, she was my mother-in-law. This took the guy by surprise, as the queue and all these happy middle-aged men just did not tie up. Oh, he said, and if I might ask, how did she pass away? The guy with the dog said, old Buster here killed her, pointing to the dog. He then rubbed the dog on the head and said, good dog. The guy in the car could not believe this. See, my mother-in-law stays with me and my wife. Is there any chance that I can perhaps rent Buster from you to take home for a week or so? The guy with the dog said, but of cause, I am sure Buster will do a very good job. That's wonderful, the guy in the car said. And when can I get it? The guy with the dog replied, well, you will have to get into the back of this queue. If you like this joke, please keep watching our next So this one time, Farmer John took his wife to the Rand Easter show, where the bulls stole the show of the day. As they walked up to the first pen, reading all the information about the different bulls, John's wife notices something. Ah, uh, this bull made it 50 times last year, she said, poking her husband in the ribs. They walked to the next pin, and once again, Farmer John's wife read the information out loud. Oh, wow. This bull made it 120 times last year, she said, smacking her husband's backside. Well, that's more than twice a week. You could learn a lot from him, that's for sure she said. At the third pen, the notice read, this bull made it 365 times last year. The wife bubbled with excitement and said, gee, that's once a day. You could really learn something from this one. Farmer John turned to look at her and said, go up and ask the official if it was the same cow every time. If you like this joke, please keep watching for our next joke. Travis Kelsey, eat this. Meet Eben Etzebeth, rugby versus NFL. Now, there will always be jokes about which is better, which is tougher and so on. But guess what can happen when two of the current all-time greats 
meet one another in a pub to sort this out once and forever. A meeting was set up. NFL's Travis Kelsey met up with rugby's Eben Etzebeth in a bar to sort the NFL versus rugby questions out once and for all. They both had their iPads with all of their statistics to ensure the facts are correct. It was game on to find the answers. Travis Kelsey started first by saying that the longest successful field goal ever to be taken by an NFL player was Justin Tucker for the Baltimore Ravens in 2021. A kick of 66 yards. Eben Etzebeth jumped onto his tablet, sweating profusely, but then a sigh of relief. The longest successful rugby penalty kick was in 1997 by Louis Moolman, a whopper of 91.9 meters. What is a meter, Travis asked. Sorry, Eben Etzebeth said. 91.9 meters is 100 yards. Eben then said, guess it's one for rugby and zero for the NFL. Now it was Eben turn to go. The quickest ever rugby player is Trey Williams from Australia. 10.1 seconds for the 100 meters. Travis Kelsey now jumped onto his iPad. Now it's his time to grin. The fastest ever NFL player is Jim Hines for the Miami Dolphins. 9.95 seconds. Guess that's one all, he said. Next question for Travis Kelsey. We have 1696 NFL players that make up all teams on an active roster. Eben Etzebeth said, sure we can beat that. He jumped onto his tablet and sure it was his time to grin again. The World Rugby International Federation comprised more than 8 million players within 132 national member federations affiliated through six regional associations. Okay, Travis smiled. That's two to one for rugby. Eben Etzebeth's turn to ask a question. We have 15 players per side. Travis Kelsey said, we have 11 players per side. Agree, let's make that three for rugby and one for the NFL. You look too calm, Travis, Eben said. Travis Kelsey then said, our biggest event, the Super Bowl, draws 115.1 million viewers. Eben Etzebeth went onto his tablet again. Our biggest event, the Rugby World Cup, draws 1.1 billion views. If we must divide that through four, because we only do it every four years, it's still about 250 million. So it's four for rugby and one or the NFL. You are still too calm, Travis Kelsey, Eben Etzebeth said. Travis Kelsey replied, let's continue. Eben now said, so your game should be much more of a running game, but our most points ever scored in a Rugby World Cup match was a whopping 152 points. This was New Zealand Wonder 45 versus Japan 7. Travis checked his iPad, 113 points, Washington 72, Giants 41. Okay, another one for rugby. That's Rugby 5, NFL 1. You are still very calm, Travis Kelsey. Taking a big hit here. Not very concerned yet, Travis Kelsey replied. Travis Kelsey then said that NFL players must be tougher than rugby players because we need all the protection. Your game doesn't need this, so we must be tougher. Eben Etzebeth replied, Many rugby players have joined the NFL in the past, but no NFL player have ever played 15 men international rugby. Too tough. But more importantly, NFL players are dressed like stormtroopers. Rugby players are Jedis. Travis just laughed and said, I will give you that one. That's six for rugby and one for the NFL. Now, as we came to the result, it seems like rugby are the clear winner here, Eben Etzebeth said. But still, you don't look disappointed. Why not? No, you haven't won Eben Etzebeth. There is one very important thing that I have obviously kept for last. What can be so important? Eben Etzebeth asked. That can make up the five points lead that rugby has. 
Well, Travis Kelsey said, let's see. Travis Kelsey then said, an NFL ball is up to 11.5 inches. Eben Etzebeth went on to the tablet, did the conversion from mm to inches. Rugby ball is 10.8 inches. Hang on, Travis Kelsey said. NFL ball has a weight of up to 15 ounces. Eben Etzebeth again went on to the tablet, do the conversion from grams to ounces and said 14 ounces. But that only makes up two points at best, Eben said. Travis Kelsey said, my point is that in the NFL, we have much bigger balls. <laughs> Eben stood up, stuck his hand out to Travis and said, please don't tell anyone. It's an obvious draw. <laughs> if you like this joke, please keep watching our next joke by clicking here. <laughs>